How's everybody doing today? This is Franco Milan with the Whole Flips Real Estate Podcast team. We got our guest here, Javier, CEO of Real Step. How you doing, Javi? Amazing, brother. Great to uh, great to, great to be on here with you, man. And um, I know this is going to be a huge podcast. And um, yeah, it's really cool. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate this. Oh no, thank you, man. I know you're super busy. You know, you you ready to go home? You've been grinding all day, bro. So we're really happy, excited to have you here on the show today. Yeah, man. Never too busy for you. Uh, you know thanks, man. <laughs> so what can you tell us about yourself, bro? We're going to jump right into the questions because I like like I mentioned, you know, you're you guys are two hours ahead and, you know, it's time to get home after a long, long Monday, bro. I got to work out after this. But um, man, I can say number one, I fail a lot. Right. Yeah, you know, I fail a lot, dude. And um, I would say probably one of the biggest things just about me, man, is this I'm relentless. You know, okay. I think that's why me and you click so much is, is that we just never give up, you know? Exactly, bro. Exactly. So I was definitely, uh, you know, we just never leave. Yeah, <laughs> we, we never like, leave the office. office. That's how we got here. I just left the office. I was working out. You're still in the office. And we're like, dude, like we, we don't stop. We really don't. And I think it's because we really value, we really value time. Yeah. I yeah, know. We know, we know, you know, we have our why, we have our purpose. So we know where we're headed. So, mm -hmm. And another thing, bro, what can you tell us, what can you tell us before, because I know, you know, you're part of the real, real step um, movement. You've been there with Rafael for, for a very long time. What was it like before real step? What, what was it before being with Rafael? Like, were you always in real estate? You know, how, how did, how did you guys connect? How, how did this come together? You know, what, what was it before real estate? What were you doing before and how did you end up in real estate? Man, even before that, it was funny. Uh, I was actually buying uh, fake Gucci belts from <laughs> Raphael. Um, I, I bought fake Gucci belts from Raphael with gift cards, like you get from like Christmas and family members and stuff. Dude, we connected because we were just hustlers, right? We yeah. just anything that we can make money on, we just we we would just end up connecting. Like we're you know from the same neighborhood, and it was funny. We always had that hustler spirit, right? Um, you know, kind of fast forward, um, I was about 19, he's 21 and, um, you know, I did the whole follow your passion. My, my passion's motorcycles, as you know, already. Yeah. And, um, I started building a bunch of motorcycles, man. Raphael calls me one day and he goes, Hey man, he's like, I need to go buy a motorcycle. Can you come with me? And I was like, hold up. What are you doing? <laughs> that You can actually <laughs> buy a motorcycle because where we're from, you don't buy that. Right. <laughs> so. He's like, yo, get, you know, ride with me. Let's go check it out. I'll tell you all about it on the way there. And then I remember getting in the car and he was just finishing up a call with a millionaire. And dude, to me, a millionaire was like a unicorn. I never, yeah. I never heard of one. I didn't think they existed. And um, it, it was super, super cool. Like just hearing that type of conversation. And, you know, we get to talk and he's like, you yeah, know, I just really got into real estate wholesaling. You know, I think at that time he'd done, you know, a deal or two at that point and starts, you know, explaining it to me and, and, and it just clicked. So we went out and he got the motorcycle. That's a whole another story. It's hilarious. <laughs> um, and then every single day I rode my motorcycle to his house, to his mother's house. And dude, we would cold call in his mother's kitchen off of pieces of paper until his mother started cooking at night and then we would have to go to the basement it would till it get late okay. i'd leave come back next day we'd do it again um and that's kind of really how things got started man it's just absolutely i we both had no idea what we were doing there was no online educators no good podcasts like this like teaching anybody so dude we would just be on the phone just making offers and we had no idea at all what we were doing but we were so hungry and passionate to make a better life for ourselves, man. You know, that fire just burned really, really bright inside of us. That's great, man. So you guys definitely, so you guys, you know, started from nothing. You guys, you've known Rafael for a while, you know, way back before he even started real estate. So yeah, that's, that's how you guys clicked. Okay. That's, that's definitely good to know that you guys, you know, I didn't know that, bro. We get together, man. Cause you got that fire in you, you know? Yeah. Just, you know, you meet another hustler, man. And you just know, right? Yeah. Exactly. You know, bro, you, you, when you know, you know, right? Yeah, that's for sure. So that's really amazing. You know, I didn't know that. I didn't know. That's a funny story that, cause we had a similar story that, you know, when, when his mom would start cooking, you guys would leak to the basement. That's, oh. I know how that is, man. 
yeah, it's man. really amazing. Have you, did you, did you ever have any doubts, bro, when you guys were starting? Did you guys ever say, you know what, this is maybe not, not the correct business or industry. Maybe we should switch it up. Man, um, I never had one single doubt on what I was doing. Okay. We, we never had a doubt in what we were doing. We doubted what we were doing because we knew it wasn't working at first. Yeah. But we never doubted. It's funny. Like we talk about it now. Everyone, you know, comes up to, you know, at least, you know, at least well, conversations I have, um, people, you know, they're like, Hey, you know, how does it feel? You know, being part of the company where you guys are, um, you know, where you're headed, aren't you excited? All that kind of stuff. And, and, and to be honest, man, obviously I'm, I'm very blessed. I'm thankful, very excited, but all of this was planned, man. Right. You know, we knew, we saw the long game. We saw, you know, he, it's going to take years and years and years of dedication. And dude, I mean, we were, I remember having a conversation when we had our first office back in Washington, DC, you know, both of us still, we had, at that time, we started hadn't even closed a deal together at that point, but we looked at each other in the eyes and we were like, we're going to be the largest real estate investment company in the world. And we set that path and we, we've talked dreams and goals and where we're going to be. Um, and we set all of that in plan and we knew that it wasn't going to be perfect. You know, we yeah. knew it wasn't going to be beautiful the first, you know, you know, couple months, years, anything like that. But you know, what do they say is that water, water focused, very focused on a rock will always cut through. So it doesn't have to be the sharpest. It doesn't have to be the best, but if you're persistent, it'll happen. And that's what we are, man. You know, you see us, man, we don't take a single day second off and because we don't, we don't doubt what we're doing and we don't doubt our abilities. And the biggest thing, man, is because we've always had faith in God as well. That's been the biggest why we've never doubted what we're doing because we know that this is our purpose. That's great, man. That's great to hear. Those are very, you know, motivating words, what you just said. You never had a doubt. You just, you just you were going with the, you know, just chipping away, right? Chipping away, doing, you know, call after call, trying to get that deal. And, you know, look at you guys now. You guys are growing, bro. You guys are, yeah. We're just getting started, man. We, just, when we hang out, we like, we look at each other and we laugh. And we're like, dude, we're just getting started with this. Residential is fun. It's beautiful. You know, we're just getting into commercial now. Um, you know, we have 400 units right now that were uh, under contract to purchase two separate assets. Um, we got, you know, keep getting presented great deals, but it's, it's nice that we're just getting this foundation started for something really, really big. So very humbled, very blessed, you know, big thing. Yeah. I see. And, and we'll touch up on that commercial stuff. Let's backtrack a little bit. How, how, um, how, you know, you guys were in Washington. How'd you guys end up in Tampa? What, what, why did you guys move? Yeah, man. The why biggest, not have the headquarters in Washington? So the biggest thing is, uh, so DC is, um, DC is a really small area, mm -hmm. right? So one of the biggest things is that in, 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 in DC is, is that there's not much land, right? There's yeah. only so many little pockets that people want to live and buy and invest. And, um, you know, pretty much we outgrew it, right? You know, we just yeah. outgrew it. And, um, started looking larger, right? And this is really spearheaded by Raphael. Yeah. That, you know, we just outgrew this area completely, man. So we looked at, you know, some of the top areas that were growing. And at that time, Tampa was one of them. And, uh, you know, I had Steven on the ground here and he actually led the charge for us having our first, first boots on the ground. Mm -hmm. And um, did it really worked out? So we started, you know, doing the virtual wholesaling thing there. And one thing led to another, and Florida doesn't have state income tax and a bunch of other reasons. <laughs> That's great, man. That, that, that what you guys did is really motivating because like, you know, everybody's comfortable in their own backyard. Nobody really wants to do that move. It takes, it takes, it takes balls, bro, to move, you know, to a different state. You don't know anyone, but that's what you really have to do. And that I, I see it as doubt being part of the fire and, pushing you guys to become more because you really move into somewhere else. You know, you're less distracted, you, you know, you're away from the family. So you're more pretty much focused. Like they say, the, the man who's most, most focused is, is a very dangerous man because you just, you just laser focused, man. So that was a big move right there. 
So yeah. being in your own backyard, you're more comfortable. You have friends, bars, everything close, right? That's the decision I think someone can make is literally if you ever feel like you're like plateaued in a certain area, just move, right? Yeah. We, these things that hold us back being comfortable you have your routines you got your friends that say hey you know it's cool just hang out no no worries no worries and you're that big fish in a really small pond you know we never put ourselves as the small fish in a big pond because we're so like even things like that we're so naturally inclined to like be comfortable and not challenge ourselves it's uh it's cool that mind shift that you end up having on being in a different area man and uh it's the best decision i ever made I, I can see that, man. It's it's very that that's very key right there. What you guys did, you guys moved, bro. It's kind of like what Grant Cardone said. You know, he moved from from California over to to what is it, Florida, Miami, because that was gonna push him, and he didn't want to be in his own backyard. So th- that right there, guys, that is very key right there. So, like what Javi said, if you plateau, you feel like you're not moving. So check your purpose again. See where you're going. I remember I loaded, dude. I loaded everything I had. You remember that old BMW I had, the old M3? Yeah. Bro, I dropped the top on the M3. I loaded all of my stuff to the roof. My whole apartment, my lease wasn't even done. But, like, there was a, there was a, a sign in my spirit that said, get up and go. And I put everything in my M3, dude. I picked, packed that thing, and I just drove down to Tampa one night. That's amazing, man. That's very yeah. motivating. Yeah, you have man. to do moves like those. You have to be able to grow. Hey, come, come move to Tampa, brother. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Yeah, I love, I love your guys' weather, man. I love that environment out there. So. Um, and then here to the next question, how is it working with, with, with Raphael? In what sense? It's in everything, you know, put it, put, does he push you guys daily? You know, how is that, that relationship with, with Raphael? Bro, we got that. What is it? We got to write over. Push each other. You push him. He pushes you. Yeah, dude. It's, it's that old saying in the Bible, iron sharpens iron. You know, one man sharpens another, right? Yeah. You know, that it, it's really cool. The dynamic that you know we have in business because you know a lot of the times they say you know you can't do business with family right mm-hmm. i actually disagree because you know we're not blood but what we have in our loyalty and in the respect that we have for each other is thicker than blood right so what we're always able to do is especially as a business partner is be completely transparent knowing you know he's got my back and i've got his right so we both are just brutally honest on everything because we want each other to get better. And I remember, dude, I've talked to the Johns about this. I've talked to like so many business partners. I even talked to you guys about this. I yeah. remember that, man. It's just like being completely and brutally honest with each other. And it's just like, dude, I think, I think it's so hard being a solopreneur because it's like everyone's like, yo, yes, sir, whatever you need. Like they're, you know, they're like, yes, man, right? But like when you really have someone like by your side, that you can like grow and, and, you know, can accept failures of yours to help, you know, be honest and grow you as a man as well. And you can do the same, like, because there's things is, is, is that accountability, man. You just can't, it, that it's so hard to find these days because everyone wants to be a people pleaser. But um, yeah, I'd say for us, man, we just hold each other accountable to greatness, man. You know, like that's, that's the biggest thing is that we just, we hold each other accountable to greatness. That's great, man. What you just said is another very key thing too. Like, like you said, a lot of people just want, they don't, they only want to become the only leaders within the organization, but then you're comfortable back, back to being comfortable, right? You don't want nobody telling you anything. Hey, you know, pick up your slack. Hey, you're getting, you're being here late. You just want to be the only one. But what you just said, if you have another, you know, high, high level individual like you and, and you just, he'll push you, you know, you know, you guys are on the same mission. So yeah. like what you said, my brother, you know, I tell him, Hey, you know, I think we should do this or hold back on this. We just keep pushing each other too. Hey, let's do, let's switch it up. So you keep each other accountable. You keep growing. And it's very key what you just said, man, because I've met a lot of people that don't want to have partners or don't want anybody telling them anything. And it, it's key. You so know, Sometimes the people's egos get in the way. Yeah, yeah. Grow, but it's just like, dude, it, it's you'll end up, you'll plateau, you'll be so lonely, and you go so much further when you take people along the journey with you, man. And um, you know, dude, I look at him as a mentor. I mean, as as you know, a brother, someone you can confide in. And it's just like I think, every, especially men as well, man. 
yeah. people think that men, like, you know, we have this super tough exterior that we can't like, you know, be open, do everything like that. I'm like, dude, some of the best leaders that I know, men and women, they have somebody, especially in their business, that they can be themselves. They can open up. They can confine them. That they know if this, they, they come up and they're like, hey, dude, that meeting you had earlier, you're a real jackass, right? <laughs> like, you need that in your life because your employees won't tell you this, right? Yeah. You have to have someone who's going to come up and like check you at the same time and be like, Hey, I really know that you, you fell short of what you could really, your potential would be. I think that you can, I know that you can do a lot better. So that's really for us, man, is, is that we just, I'm always, we're holding each other accountable to potential. You know, it's huge. Yeah, yeah huge. exactly. No, that's definitely, that's definitely key right there. Yeah. <laughs> like you said, it's a really good, um, you're really good to touch on that for sure. Yeah. Like your, your employee's not going to tell you, right. They're always going to want to please you. You're, you're the boss. You're, you're the leader there. But on yeah. the other hand, the other guy, you know, he'll tell you, you're your business partner. He'll be able to push you and tell you what you did wrong. Mm-hmm. And um, we're going to dive deep into the, into the, 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 you guys organization. When did you guys decide to hire? When did you guys decide to, to, you know, okay, it's time to stop calling ourselves, ca- calling these leads ourselves. It's time to hire a team, you know, delegate those, those positions. Mm-hmm. When was it for you guys? How many uh, were you guys so, so for us, man, like when we first got started, like on everything, when we were just like just cold calling like out of nowhere, um, it was literally off day one. <laughs> like that's how yeah. I got started, man. I mean, <laughs> he's he's he came with the vision of it, but he really discovered it first. Is is that the opportunity to be able to create this real estate business? You could bring friends and you could bring family in. At no cost. I mean, I didn't take a salary when I first joined him, right? Yeah. Like when I first joined, like what was going on? I was like, bro, I'm going to eat what I kill, right? So literally, I remember our first office man in DC. I mean, not even the first office when we were still calling in his mother's kitchen. Is yeah. We had people just literally just coming in randomly, calling. Hey, dude, let me just, I got 20, 30 minutes. Let me get in. Let me just, you know, pick up, pick up, give me some lists. Let me see if I can call and get some deals, right? Yeah. And then to the office in DC, man. And we had, you know, four guys just full commission. And it was, you know, we just had people just plugging away because we were all, we saw the vision and we just started adding to it. It wasn't anything structured, you know, I don't know if you know this or not, but like, it was crazy when we first started calling, I ended up branching out and going to start my agent business because I actually saw what 80% of the leads we were talking to wanted to list their house instead. Okay. So that's actually a better question that you can ask him as far as like the structure of like building and building and building. Like, you know, when did you outsource here and outsource there? Um, I know on my own business, when I started ground up, man, it was when I, I personally, um, I, I, uh, I, I ended up, I think got like my first, my 10th listing and, um, and, and, you know, my clients were like, you know, they thought I was supposed to be doing everything and supposed to be everywhere. Yeah. But, what, 20 years old and I lived in my mom's basement. <laughs> <That's> crazy. <laughs> and, um, yeah. I mean, obviously it's when you get too busy, you know, I think, I think after you're, you're making about 10,000 a month, I think that's probably the best time to, to start bringing in help because when you're growing a business, you know, you have to know everything, especially being a solopreneur, right? That's what so yeah. many entrepreneurs want to do is that the first thing you want to do is like, Oh, I have money. Let's throw, you know, a solution at the problem by just cutting a check. And what ends up happening, you hire bad, you don't know the process, you're trying to do one thing, teach another, figure it out, um, instead of really understanding your whole business model and your whole business process. Um, you know, so many people we want to outsource, you know, I would probably say give it three, four months, start making about $10,000 a month. So you have a cushion to be able to learn and hire and, and, and deal with those blows, man. Yeah, no, exactly. Though you're, you're just dropping good, good information, Javi, like you just mentioned right now. I've seen it over and over again in this industry where we have guys come into the office and they're asking, it's already, what is, what's in it for me? And like you just mentioned, when you started, you didn't, you didn't take a salary. You just, I kill what I eat, right? I my first two years in real estate, man. <laughs> you, can, you can start, that is the caption. Javier didn't make money his first two years in real estate. That, that what you said is key, bro. Dude, and the thing is, is that because no one wants to sacrifice, bro. You know what I'm saying? No one wants to get uncomfortable. Dude, my, my own mother, she told me when I first got started, she was just like, um, she was like, you know, you have two, two choices. She was like, 
you can either continue with real estate and move out, or you can stay here and go back to school. And I asked her if I could borrow a suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but like, that's the level of passion and dedication. It's just like for us as visionaries and, and just general entrepreneurs is that we see things people don't see. So how dedicated are you to that vision? How passionate are you about, you know, being your own boss, being able to follow that dream and that passion and create that vision that God's given you? Um, dude, I mean, I still, I'm still chasing it, man. You know, I want to be a big old developer. No one sees that. Um, but that's why, you know, I'm here today, man. I'm still trace. I'm, I'm just a boy chasing his dream, man. Oh yeah, man. That's, that's definitely, definitely very valuable. Like you said, it, it, you have to have to gain into any, any business, right? When you start a business, it's nasty at the beginning. People want to start as bosses right away. They want to see what, how much are they going to get paid, right? Everybody wants to be a boss. Everyone wants to be a boss, but no one wants to sacrifice what the boss got to sacrifice. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I tell these guys, just look at them. Okay, you want to be boss? Here's the bills. You know, take care of the bills, right? Take care of the office lease. Everyone wants to be a boss, so it's time to take a loss. Yeah, yeah. They don't see those things. They just see, you know, they they get they fall for the trap, social media and all this stuff, but they they really got to learn that it's not pretty at the beginning you have to sacrifice so that's very key what you said man <laughs> dude you got it, it ebbs and flows man and that and that's part about being the boss yeah is that you have to like you have to be able to absorb that and deal with it mm -hmm. but also you also have to see like being able to predict it you know from those and like learn from it man i feel like no one's going to be a great not even a boss but you know just a great owner you know great uh, leader right more than anything man i think it's just like it's learning being a great leader is, is the key in all of this. And you have to take the wins and the losses, man. You know, you, it comes with the wins and the losses. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, you know, we've, we've been watching you guys, you know, we've saw, seen you guys grow massively and uh, we've just been watching you guys over and over and what, what, We've seen the whole, you know, you guys started. We were one of the first ones who went to the very first mastermind, if I'm not wrong. Absolutely. Before we did an event, before anything, you guys were one of the first. I remember getting on that yacht the first time, dude. We yeah. Real, real good people. I remember, bro. You had a really good spirit when we first met. That's great, man. How is that right now? What, what's, what's, what's next in that department? And, the, the, you know, the, the real, real empire? Are you guys going to do a national... Yeah. Yeah. We're, um, dude, we have very, very big dreams, um, big aspirations. A lot of things we're lining up. Um, dude, we're even thinking about doing masterminds on a jet, man. Like that's amazing. That, I seen that. Yeah. And I see you speaking too at them. That's why, you know, I'm asking cause you're part of it. You guys are definitely putting, putting good, good content, good information out there, man. Helping these guys. I mean, see that's, and that's the difference between our movement in any other movement out there i'm not even just real estate just all around man is having actual performers and actual operators real operators teaching right teaching on a dude i, I did a call today i don't know if you were on it i did a call today at one o'clock i have three calls every week we go over our different departments we go over marketing we go over dispositions we go over operations right and I mean, dude, I'll even show you this right here. Look at this. I'm, I'm literally going over our sales sheets, man. Like we had our, our sales meeting today. When we're done with this, man, I'm going to be underwriting. I'm, I'm, I'm on a daily basis, man, you know, doing that actual, uh, you know, doing the actual business, right, on a daily basis. So when we teach, we're not teaching about what worked. We're teaching what works, Right. Like we do, we just did a call with the FTC or with, uh, with our uh, clients about, we hired a law firm about FTC regulations. Right. So like those are real life things that continually change. And what we're doing, man, is, is that we want to be the leaders. If we're not the leader of the industry already, we want to be one of the biggest and the baddest. And that comes with progression, man. You know, that comes with growth, finding out what works, what doesn't work. Okay. I'm going to teach something. Now everyone starts doing it. Now what's next, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, you know, most of these gurus and teachers out here, man, they taught about what worked in 2019 at the beginning of 2019. Cause I can guarantee you what worked two months ago. It ain't working right now. It might work 
kind of a little, you might get one or two deals, but man, I mean, we're consistently locking up, you know, a quarter million dollars in projected profit. We're assigning a, a six figures worth of projected profit, you know, or of, of actual profit. Yeah. And we're, we have strategies and, and, and techniques that, you know, work better than other companies, man, because we are consistently, you know, looking to innovate, right? Exactly. That's, that's, that's what everyone does, man, you know? And what you just said too, it's, you're just dropping content keys after keys, man. What you just mentioned too, I mean, you hired an attorney. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like you said, just said you hired an attorney to adapt on this new, you know, what, what's going to happen, you know, just want to make sure you're protected. Everything's flowing good. Cause that's, that's very important, right? Every single day, man, you know, there's new laws, new regulations. How do you protect yourself? Right. Cause that's yeah. the big thing, man. You know, at least, at least my philosophy in business, it's not, how do I make a lot of money? Right. I can make a lot of money. It's how do I not lose money? Yeah. That's all I care about, man. Making money is easy. How do you not, lose money right so i mean that can go on a lot of things legalities marketing costs you know like like there's so many different things that we do on a, on a daily basis man that can be more efficient and we can be better about and we learn that on a daily man and and that's you know that's the biggest thing for us is that this it doesn't stop all right yeah. until that point of like you know hire out completely i got someone to take care of that dude i'm doing this and i'm trying to do this to the best of my ability man you know, I want to see what the maximum potential this is going to be. Exactly. So that's very important what you just said there, man. Adapting, you know, as entrepreneurs, you can't be teaching what was taught last quarter because we things things start changing, right? Things start changing. So now, um, how many properties are you guys closing a month right now? Uh, right now, we're on that 50 mark, man. That's, uh, you know, give or take. I mean, obviously, we're in Q4 now, so it's, we're dealing most of our properties closed out Q3. Um, but yeah, going into Q4, man, we're looking this quarter to be around that million mark, you know. That's great. You know, That's it, great. The, thing, the big thing for us, man, is just being consistent, right? You know, some people, we got the highs and we got the lows and stuff. We're working on consistently, you know, year over year have growth, being able every quarter to hit that million mark, if not better, um, you know. It, it, it's a beautiful thing, man. And we're just, you know, glory be to God, you know, where we are here today, man. It's just, it's great. That's great, man. Where do you get this knowledge from? The, the stuff you're talking about, where do you <laughs> learn this stuff? Failure. Failures. Failure. Okay. That's um, dude, I read a lot for sure. Um, I watch some of the, honestly, some of the best leaders in the world, um, you know, who have lived, who are living. I watch a lot of, you know, mentality stuff like Kobe Bryant, Mm. Uh, just being immensely strong, being able to push through, um, you know, to be more solution oriented. This is one of our buyers. Um, and two, man, you know, I learned from a lot of the people around me, you know, I've learned from Raphael. I learned from Nick. Um, I've learned stuff from you as well, man. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a sponge and that's how I like to be, man. You know, I, I'm, I'm very, I'm always open and very receptive to what the world is telling me. And, you know, I, 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 I try and I try and I try and I fail more than I, I actually succeed, but I never stop. And that's why I just, I just always taken wisdom, man. I'm always learning. I remember I used to, every appointment I used to go on, I used to always ask the sellers. I'd say, hey, you know, whether we do a deal or not today, what's one thing that you could teach me that I could be a wiser man? <laughs> and so I always, every single time I meet with someone, man, I always ask them that. So I guess that leads on to my next question. Frank, can you give me some wisdom? Tell me one thing today I can take away and be a wiser man. Well, I, it seems like you got you got a lot of wisdom, bro, a lot of knowledge, but uh, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Something you already know. Don't ever give up, right? That's all. That's what I can say. Yeah, and I know you won't, but. You know, as we as entrepreneurs, we continue to go and we take failures, you know, but we adapt, we adapt, we adapt, we, we stay positive, we stay positive, we never, we never give up. So we're never giving up. Never, man. It's yeah. funny. I love that little picture that someone has of like someone digging and they're chipping through the dirt and because you don't see it, right? You never see like where that goal and stuff is. 
So you are chipping and chipping and chipping. And then there's one guy who he stops right before he has one last break and he gets the big diamond, right? Yeah. And then that one guy who's never stopped and, and, and then he hits his goal, right? Exactly. So we're always, you know, I, I, I always say is we're always battling ourselves. We're always battling ourselves mentally. And, um, you know, we have to train ourselves to be mentally, not just strong, but have um, what is it, mental stamina. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And that's, and that's a, dude, I had, what is it? The last two, three months, I've just had everything thrown at me, dude, kitchen sink and everything like and the worst things that you can think of. And it's one of those that, you know, 99% of the time, 99% of people are going to stop. They're going to fold and they're going to be like, dude, this is too hard. I'm going to stop. Right. But I remember being that 19 year old boy who always prayed to be big, bad real estate investor, big, bad business owner. You know, I want, I had these huge dreams and aspirations and I knew it wasn't going to happen tomorrow, but I prayed that God would get me to where I wanted to be. Not obviously, you know, where he wanted me in life, but I always prayed to become that man. <clears throat> so now when struggles come up in my life, whether it's lifting, whether it's adversity, whether it's just any, any problem that happens in my life, I stop and I catch myself when it's painful, challenging, whatever. And I stop and I thank God for that challenge because that challenge is getting me closer to my goal. If that challenge wasn't there, it wouldn't make me better. Right. You couldn't have said it any better. You couldn't have said it any better. Right. It, it, it grows you. It teaches you a lesson. Like you said, it's all about learning these lessons. Not saying what's that saying that says it's not what, it's not what happens to me. I forgot what the saying is. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it doesn't happen to me. It happens for me, I think. For right? me, yeah. For me. So you learn from these things, from these battles. It's a constant battle being an entrepreneur, but you're, you're a great leader. You know, you you got all these great qualities, man. So that's why I didn't know what, what you caught me at. A, at a, I've, got, I've got great guys in my life like you, man. I'm, I'm always watching you, how you lead your team, man, as well. And, uh, and that's what I'm saying. I, I, I'm always, I'm observing. And dude, like, and think, you don't even realize this, but like, I, I watch, I know a lot of other people watch you, man. I see like little things that you do and you do extremely well. And I just take them like, that's awesome. Like, you know, let me incorporate this, how I, how I can bring this to my team and let's you know, bring them together, watch a little video, kind of start bringing a little, you know, rah, rah back in and, and incorporate. And, and, but that's what it is, man. Ultimately, they're always going to look to you on a good day, on a bad day, you know, on your best days and your worst days. Yeah. Uh, they're always going to be looking at you for what kind of day will they be having? What energy should they be doing? Dude, I've been on the sales floor for the last two weeks just because I want to show them is, is that like, I'm never going to be too good not to get back into the weeds and show them, you know what I'm saying? Who's, who, who, who still can close, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you still got it. You still got it, man. But the thing is, that's why they call it a leader, man. You're literally leading your team so and they won't follow you unless you're willing to go there man so that, that's, that's what the whole business thing's about man it's just being a great leader you know leaving your ego and being able to just you know get it done and show them you know show your team that you, you can get it done and, and take them with you man it's such a gratifying experience and too mm -hmm. creating leaders man you know i got we have so many women in our office man that are that i'm creating it's like these little queens man dude they're leading their own departments man we have you know, one woman who's never done real estate before. Dude, I saw her out today, dude. She's taking one of the other new guys, to helping get his calls to be able to lock up the deals. And she's like, hell no, we're not going to take this deal. Get that guy, get that guy back on the floor. Let him know that we're going to make sure we're getting every single cent. <laughs> That's <laughs> it's, crazy. She's negotiating like, you know, like she's been doing this for years, but it's because we've been able to put her, you know, I, I specifically, I, I let her make her own decisions raise her as a leader, right? I'm not here to micromanage people, man. You know what? I, I'm being a leader and I, I want to lead people to be leaders themselves, you know? Yeah. What you just said, it was just another great example, man. Another key, key thing that, you know, you, you create these leaders so they can run the show and they don't depend on, on people. You're creating solid leaders who, who do their own decisions, not micromanaging, 
so they can be able to run the sales floor, right? And also, like you said, the energy and you as a leader, you don't just want to be pointing fingers like, hey, do this, do that. People kind of start losing respect for you when you're just pointing fingers, not doing it yourself in a way and the energy you output because then people are just going to start not believing in the vision. That's what I kind of. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll think that like they're working for you, right? Yeah. I like to create an atmosphere that we're working together for this massive goal, right? And um, yeah, that's probably one of the big things, man, I would say is, is that uh, that leaders don't do enough is painting that vision for their team where you're putting that vision constantly in front of your team saying, hey, this is where we are going, yeah. right? Where I'm leading you, right? This is where I want to go. <laughs> yeah. The vision, because we're visionaries, right? So we're putting that vision like for us, dude, I want to be on Forbes, right? I want us to be one of the, the number one real estate company on Forbes, right? I tell my team that constantly. Mm -hmm. We want to be a hundred million dollar team. Constantly, dude. You ask them, hey, what's our goal? They'll tell you. Be like, Javi won't stop telling us about that. But dude, it riles them up and they know what we're doing, bro. They know exactly where we're going, how we're doing it. They see, hey, he's passionate about this. And dude, to be honest, is I only want I only want obsessives on our team for that vision. You know, because if we're all doing it, we're all going to that same thing, man. It's gonna be a fun journey. It's gonna be a fun ride. And that's where you you operate in strength, man, when you're passionate about where you're going. Right? Yeah. Yeah, you, you you need to wake up to to, to know where you're going. Dude. You just don't want to wake up and go somewhere where you're just going to go and, you know, it's just another day. It's the same thing over and over again. Yeah, dude. That's for us, man. Like, we want to have fun with all of this, man. I want to have Ferraris out there. I want everyone to have, like, you know, their own portfolios of real estate. We want to create, you know, like like a, fam a family, right? Yeah. But the thing is, for me, dude, family is built in longevity. Family is built in, you know, that safety, security, right? You know, yes, every single person on their team, does Javi have your back? I, I hope they say yes because I really try and get to know them and get to know their dreams and their goals and their wives. So we can align all of this together, man. You know, it, it, it's really all about taking everyone on this journey and, and knowing everyone who's along this journey with us, man. It's beautiful. Even us, man. I mean, we shit, we got a vision aligned to ourselves together. We're always on the phone talking. What's that next thing? What's that next yeah. thing? What's that next thing? You know? Exactly. Yeah. You, you have to, you have to, right? That's why I wanted to bring you exactly to this, this same very same reason bring you on, on this podcast because you know what you're talking about you know about the vision you know how to lead Brother. team yeah, you definitely do know every time you talk to you it's a, you 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 see that form of authority that leadership so that definitely rubs off onto your team and your team just you know leads as well so you guys have a great culture also how do you keep that that solid culture what 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 would you say is the top three three things to have that such an amazing culture in your office uh caffeine <laughs> caffeine <laughs> um man i i would say the top three things i would say number one would be our goal yeah right um i would say yeah the goal i would probably say second is um uh accountability right so you know we know where we're going and then we you know make sure we hold everyone accountable to you know, doing what they need to be doing. Um, and I would say third would be, uh, I, there's kind of like four things. I would say third would be trust. Trust, okay. Is, is that we trust everyone in their own departments to be doing what they need to do, right? And I trust all of our team's opinions. So they never feel like, oh man, hobby's like, you know, being a dictator and, you know, saying this and that and this and that. I catch myself a lot. Like I always feel like I have the right answers, but I never do. So I've learned to really trust the opinions of everyone on our team and really elevate them. Um, but I'd say fourth man is just energy straight up. Like we, I just come in every single day and I want to create a very um, energetic atmosphere in a place that like it's conducive for business. So super loud music, like today I was playing like, you know, EDM and, and, and super high beat energy music, got everyone in a super really good mood. If I ever feel like the energy is down, dude, I'll go buy like coffee. So everyone comes in, they're like, damn, you know, this is awesome. You know, you kind of switch it up a little bit. We plan like, you know, weekly events for our team just so they kind of have things to look forward to. But I always have something, right? There's always something going, there's a theme, yeah. right? There's always something going on. 
So when people show up in the office, they're not like showing up. They're like, oh, another day of work, man. You know, oh, you know, I gotta sit at my desk. It's like, no, dude. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just hy- hyping things up. Like today, for example, um, I'm trying to figure out uh, what you gonna call it. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, you know, who's going to have the coolest Christmas uh, of celebration because you're going to close the most deals. I was just like, you know, the person who closes the most deals in November, he might do something for you and, and you know, for Christmas. So what we're doing is, is that we're always giving like uh, uh, that next thing, right? Is I'm always like thinking ahead. So everyone's like, they're not just showing up to show up. They're showing up because we have like a vision of what's next. And we have a vision of, you know, just some fun stuff, man. You know, it's, yeah. You know, we're, we're just creating excitement. You know, it's crazy as a boss, man. You know, you're, you're, you're controlling everyone's emotions and their attitude. Where'd you learn these things? How did you learn these things? Like, you know what? I need to keep these guys energized. I need to see what's next. Dude, we, uh, I, it, it became super apparent to me when we hired Nick. Mm. And he actually took a company from $2 million to $200 million in revenue, right? So there's a couple of things. And uh, to 200, did yeah. I hear that right? Two million, yeah, I didn't stutter. Two <laughs> to 200 million. And um, the first thing that he uh, actually implemented his first week, he, he never done real estate before, but he said the number one thing that you have to do is turn up the music and turn down the air or turn down the temperature. Turn up the music and turn down the temperature. Yep. So we, uh, dude, I got a speaker. I, I got connected on my phone right here. I, uh, I'm always, always, always playing super upbeat, hype music. It sounds like a club when you come in, man. Yeah. Everyone who comes on our calls, they're like, yo, where are you? <laughs> and, um, and so, yeah, dude, so we do that. And then we turn it really, really low, the temperature super low. Um, so everyone's like cold. And so they have to move around and stuff. So what ends up happening is, is that that's going to create energy. The music's going to drive your voice to, you know, inflect higher. And you actually sound more confident over the phone with sellers. So our whole team's super energetic. If anyone's ever down, you know, I'm going up to them, making sure that, you know, they're, they're, they're in a good mindset and a good state. Um, and to another thing he taught us, man, was, um, you know, in the morning, right, to have that morning meeting at like 830 is when we do hours. We have our morning meeting not to just check in, but what we do is, is that we do that to kind of gauge everyone mentally and we ask people questions, right? We'll ask them on the spot, hey, how sharp are you, right? Maybe you have one of your guys come uh, hungover, uh, hungover, right? So yeah. I'm speaking directly to him. And then what we'll do is, is that, you know, if he can't pick up, if we can tell that he's super off, we'll make sure lead flow isn't going to be going there that day, right? How do, that's, let me touch up on that. How do you, when you get guys, you know, you as, as a CEO, how do you deal with that? You know, that's so important for some guys. Do you just let it slide? How many times do you let it slide? And then what do you do after there? Uh, what if like what someone comes in, they're like sloppy and they're just yeah. old. Um, I mean, for me, if someone's tenured and they've been here for a while, right? I love it. I respect it. I'll go have a conversation with them be like, hey, man, I understand. Trust me, I've been there before. But at the same time, this is that you remember what our vision is, what we're working towards. So I need you to tighten up. I need you to be sharper. I might send them home for the day, right? Mm. Just be like, hey, you know, I just don't want that energy around, right? That's totally fine for me. Hey, go reset. Go go do that so you can come back the next day, make it up. I'm not going to beat them up on it. I, I remember being that guy before. Yeah. Um, when my boss used to come in and just you know, berate me, I got fired one day on that. Like, I want to make sure this is that they know that like, hey, you know, what, what the Bible says, man, uh, uh, he, who is, uh, he who shows mercy uh, – uh, what do you call it? He, he who is merciful will be shown mercy. Yeah. Right. So, so I, I really try and, you know, uh, hold a lot of biblical principles to my life. And that's one, my, you know, for example, but dude, if the guy's new and he's showing up like that, dude, you're gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, for, me, man, for, for me, this is that, you know, unless you've proven yourself in our company, you have no room for error. Right. Yeah. I understand you know making mistakes and stuff like that, but when you know you gotta show up the next day and you know the whole team's counting on you, because that's my thing, man. Is I live by the principle, I live by the philosophy of you're only as good as your weakest player, period. Right? So if you go check out my team, I got all stars, man. I got probably one of the best sales teams in real estate in the nation. Put it up against anybody. 
It's crazy. That's that's yeah. good things to it's hear, a, man. So it's a culture of excellence, man. You know, it's a culture of excellence. Yeah, I've seen it. I've been there. You know, you guys have got this great, great culture, great office, man. It's just like you said. You guys have got. It, you. you just feel the energy. You Thank feel you. that energy, bro. Thank you, brother. And um, what? What the next question is like? Based on what you just said, uh, uh, Nick. Let's touch up on Nick. So Nick helps you with with the organization as well is he an acquisition manager no he's my coo man he's your coo right. yeah, he's my coo we um uh you know i kind of saw him as as just such an integral part of this business because like we were talking about before man about wisdom right yeah Dude, i'm not that good man i'm not that smart i'm telling you i'm really not but the thing <laughs> i got the smartest the most hard-working yeah. I mean, I've got the best. I surround myself with the best people that you'll ever find. And Nick's one of them, man. So, I mean, I'm blessed to have him by my, by, uh, you know, my right hand, man. He's just, he's someone I can trust too, you know, really confined in as well. Um, just great, great man. But he does every year right now, pretty much how we've divvied it up right now. I'm um, especially going to Q4. It's just all hands on deck. It's the worst time in real estate, dude, for us. We're blowing it out of the water, man. We're doing so yeah. freaking well. Um, and dude, Nick, yeah, he does. You know, he's running our acquisitions. Dude, the guy is freaking natural with sales, dude. It's 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 beautiful, man. It's just watching these just fluids it's like a dolphin in water, man. It's just absolutely beautiful. But then on the other side, you know, I do sales, and I'm like, stay away from my sales team. <laughs> <laughs> And what we do is we divide and conquer and, and it's really cool, man, because, you know, he just has a way he's, he's an incredible, incredible leader. You should be honest. You should bring him on your podcast as well. One day. Um, he's, he's a natural man. Absolutely incredible. I am definitely going to consider that. Yeah. I've seen him. I fall, you know, I, I don't, I think I follow him on Instagram. I need to check, but I've seen him on your, your Instagram and dude is just solid, man. So don't, don't follow me on Instagram. I, 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 I said the other day, you don't follow me, Suarez, S-U-A-R-E-Z underscore capital. Dead to play myself. Yeah, you guys got to follow him. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You've been following me for a minute, brother. And, and the thing is, it's that like, I don't even do it for followers and stuff. It's cool because like both of us, we really try and post for content. You know, it's crazy. One of my followers, man, the other day, he actually reached out to me because as you guys know, I'm super, super uh, spiritual. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I really try and bring value in that sense. Dude, I had one of my followers reach out to me and he was like, dude, I'm really struggling with my spiritual life, right? With, you know, just finding a mentor and walking along this path with, you know, another, you know, you know, person in this walk. Yeah. And I was like, and I, once again, I'm not the best. I just got baptized. All that. Dude, my feet are still wet, right? But I got him in contact with my spiritual mentor. And he called me the other day, man, to damn near in tears. And it was really cool because, you know, in this, man, it's, it's this whole journey we walk together. We, we are here to lift each other up, right? And, and it's cool, you know, my IG, you know, I don't have a lot of followers and stuff like that. But I can tell you is just that the people, like, who actually engage in stuff, dude, we really, I mean, we're, we're really growing together, man. So, you know, later down the road, we're in commercial development. We got all this you know, great stuff going on, man. You know, I, I want to have a lot of people have gone on that journey with us as well. Yeah. That's what, that's very key. What you just said, you can't, you know, it's very important for you to keep those relationships, yeah. not burn bridges because we're, we're all on here in this plan for, 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 for some, some type of mission, right? A hundred years, less than a hundred years. And how long has our earth been along? I'm like, dude, we are a speck of sand, you know, of this whole day. It's so crazy to think. And that's why too, man, like that's why kudos to doing this podcast, man. It's just Thanks, like man. everything you can. We have like no time. Yeah, exactly. I want to, you know, this podcast, Tell You the Truth, I, I, you know, launched. I've been wanting to do it for a while. And it was like, let's, let's get it on there. Let's get great people, great content. Well, I did too. Look, you, you got you got bigger balls than I do. I bought a mic. I still have <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I can't wait. Hey, I can't wait till you roll out with yours. You know, I'll be more than happy to be on it, man. Uh, uh, I'm going to watch you shine, King. <laughs> So uh, here leads to the next question. Let me see. What any books? I know you've talked about books, but any um, books that you currently recommend right now as of right now? Definitely, bro. Eat the Frog. Eat the Frog. That's the book I never. Eat the Frog by Brian Tracy. 
Eat the Frog. Let me write that down. I've never heard of that one. Is That's a book that'll change. Uh, that'll change just how you work, how you do business. Um, it Basically, what it is is that if you have to eat a frog, right, go ahead and eat it first thing in the morning. So the rest of your day is going to be super easy. Okay. So do the worst first thing in the morning. That's the worst thing first, right? And then if you got to eat two frogs, eat the ugly one first. <laughs> eat the ugly one. Okay. Uh, that's good tips. Good tips, man. So, so I would say that, um, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, I actually have a bunch of books over here, man, that uh, <laughs> I always yeah. have books around me. I'm always reading, just trying to better myself. Yeah. Uh, I'd say another one's the 12 week year. 12 week year, okay. 12 week year is really good. That's one of the big things about us, man, is that we're really big about time. So it's about doing what you would do normally in a year, getting that down and being able to do that in a quarter. So being more productive, being more efficient. Um, uh, uh, another really good one, this is actually really good for leaders. I've actually, I have all of the women on our team. And I don't do this to pick on the women. They, none of the guys want to read. Um, so all the women on our team, we actually have, um, it's the 21 laws, of, uh, 21 laws of leadership. 21 laws. Okay. And we actually bought the workbook, right? The workbook. So it's, a, it's a workbook. And what they're actually doing is that every single week, um, we actually, they read a chapter and they go in and they fill all the questions out. Um, I've done that one myself. I learned so much about leadership on there. Um, and dude, I mean, obviously the biggest one out of anything I'd say is the Bible. Okay. Um, it's, it's the truth. It's the word. Um, anything that I go on, uh, as far as like issues, anything like that I have in my life that I'm, I'm dealing with, um, dude, it's crazy. I'm, I'm able to turn to my spiritual mentor and he's able to give me these principles in the Bible of, you know, not even just how did Jesus handle certain situations, right? But you know, how did, you know, other people in the Bible be able to build businesses, build companies, if you have, you know, bad employees, if you have great employees, like little things like that. And just, uh, you know, it, it really, it becomes the ultimate truth on how you want to conduct yourself, you know, as, as a, as a person in business. Um, so I would say the Bible, man, that, that, that's my, that's my foundational piece. I read, you know, six or seven chapters uh, a night, just little by little by little by little, because it's crazy, man. You know, God, God works through the Bible. It's, it's funny is that one of the first things my spiritual mentor taught me when I was reading is that you're not actually reading the words, right? You end up reading between the lines. And what God does is that when you read the Bible, he teaches you through the words and through the actual book, Right. So when you pick it up, man, it's, it's crazy how the Lord can actually speak to you. And, um, yeah, man. So I, I would say between those, it's, um, have, have played the biggest part in, in kind of who I've become and just a leader. Oh, that's great. Definitely. Definitely. I'll be putting these books down here in the description for, you know, great content. Great. Definitely. Definitely books that we need to read. Definitely. And, um, now that leads this one. Yeah, I know. I don't know. We went a little bit over time, man. And I know you're busy. You know, you guys. No, no, no brother. I, I got. I got all that for you, man. I'll do that. I, I, I wish you that. Been on or offline. Yeah. Uh, it's always good to catch up with you. Man. We're constantly talking. Yeah, constantly exchanging. Oh, hey, <laughs> and uh, that video. It's funny because that video you were watching the uh, the Patrick. I was watching that the day before. Yeah. See, I I think it was released or something. And that 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 video was good. Dude, you know what's crazy is is that we we sometimes and when we get into the thick of things, mm -hmm. we start thinking, oh man, did I make the right move? Did I do the right move? Do I need to do this? What do I need to do? Mm -hmm. Is it, you know, is 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 this going to help drive our company? And we're looking one or two steps, right? Yeah. But dude, when he broke down, it's just like yo, a grandmaster. Because I love playing chess, man. I'm a big chess player myself. Yeah. He's like, yo, grandmasters think 15 steps, right? Like, yo, are we really thinking 15 steps? And I had, to, I had to step back. I started, I caught myself as like, dude, I'm not doing this, right? I wasn't yeah. thinking at that time. Like I do think, you know, further down the road. Yeah. I was like, we're really thinking 15. Am I putting our team in the right position to do that? I had to really stop, catch myself and like start thinking to say, hey, am I doing this right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, I started doing yoga, started, you know, kind of just being more present, but thinking yeah. 15 steps ahead, 
Dude, it's been the most revolutionary thing. Just literally thinking our, our game like a chess player, dude, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's crazy, man. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, I love that. Video. Good- Patrick Bet David, he is – Hey, that would be a great video for you to for, for you to uh, to interview. A great great man for you to interview for sure. Yeah, I know definitely. The guy knows a lot, man. Is he Mexican? I uh, I don't think he is. I think he's uh, uh, Middle Eastern. I think he's is Middle it? Eastern. Yeah, bro, I swear because I heard him speak in Spanish. I was just like, bro. I see. Yeah, I know. It was one of ours. One of our Spanish. Yeah, no, I've seen it. Um, Hispanic, right? I've seen him. I've seen him speak Spanish, but he is. He's. Uh, he's Middle Eastern. Gotcha. And um, what here would lead to one of the last questions. Actually, the last question, man. It's what is next for for Javier, Javier Suarez. What is next for you, man? Mm, development. Development. Dude, I've. Uh, I'm working on. You know. Building a high rise. That's crazy, man. I can't that's, wait. To- um, that's, that's definitely, uh, I think it's going to be a lot sooner uh, okay. than, than I expect. But, um, you know, I've actually, I've been meeting with a couple brokers, um, you know, building either here, St. Petersburg, Washington, D.C., whatever it is. Um, but that's it. That's, that's I want to get my first high rise you know, at least start breaking ground on that here shortly. Mm, that's that's definitely great, great, great goals, man. Right behind you, man. I want one of those. Oh, those are those are gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. I want like those. It's gonna happen. I'll sell you the penthouse. <laughs> Let's do it, man. Let's do it. In Miami, it has to be in Miami though. Oh man, good old Miami. <laughs> What's funny is I know so many people who are literally waiting with bags of cash waiting to buy in miami once the market thinks because everyone's over leveraged over there yeah so once the market takes a little dip man i gotta know so many people they're waiting to buy on brickle you know all these places man just waiting it's beautiful i just got pitched a 20 million dollar uh condo yeah for like 12 million dollars i was like oh this is not good you know, <laughs> you're gonna you gotta buy it. you gotta treat yourself man you gotta buy it. you gotta you know no you gotta wait wait till the Dude, you know this. Man. You make your money when you buy the property. Yeah. Period. So I'm waiting for it to go. How low can you go? <laughs> exactly. No. Well, Javi, I mean, uh, you know, that was one of the great. It was definitely great interviewing you, man. You run. It's not easy to run an operation like that. You know, I see you. I follow you on social media. You wake up early. You grind. You work hard. And then you head to to get your workout in, man. Not everybody has that discipline. As much as everybody talks about it, like, not you're in the gym even weekends, bro. So that's definitely very motivation. Somebody twice a day on the weekend. Twice. Um, well, I actually I wanted to come with something valuable, right? Yeah. So really, uh, put together my uh, workout partner Eddie, um, who uh, owns Science of Strength. Um, dot com. We actually put together a 90 day workout program um, for anyone who wants to get started it, through uh, an app called True Coach. So we have every single workout for 90 days planned um, for you guys. Uh, all you have to do is you email me. Uh, you can email me Javier, J A V I E R, at realstep.com um, and just let me know that you want to uh, get the workout plan. We'll put you on for free. And um, yeah, man, it's 90 days. You see the crazy workouts that we do. If you don't nice. follow me already, it's Suarez, S-U-A-R-E-Z underscore capital. And um, yeah, dude, you'll see the workouts that we do. Uh, you remember when we were on the on the yacht last year? Dude, yeah. I, was, I was chubby. I was chunky, man. You remember I that? Fit. Dude, and now it's, I, you know, I mean, the last six months doing the workouts on this program, um, dude, I'm down to like, I think it's 10% body fat. Um, I put on like 15 pounds of muscle. Um, I, I, I feel freaking awesome. And, um, but that's the biggest thing about being, you know, a, a high performing executive is not just challenging yourself in the business side of things mentally, but physically and spiritually. And just literally, I look at all three of those, you know, being, you know, what is it? Body, mind, and spirit. Yeah. I rate myself one out of 10 in every single one of those divisions. Am I working my mind out the same way I'm working my body out? Am I working my spirit out the same way I'm working my biceps, right? Like those kind of things. Um, so that's why I wanted to come. I didn't want to come and just 
you know, ha- listen to me rap the whole time. Um, I wanted to come and brother, obviously, you know, you, I want you to try this as well. Like, dude, these workouts are like planned to an absolute T. We've actually tested it with a bunch of other companies and stuff. And it's, it's built for super high performers um, to get huge results. And it's a mix between Olympic lifting and, um, and CrossFit. So uh, yeah, just email me happier at realstep.com and uh, you know, we'll get you guys connected. Sounds good. I'll definitely, I'll be more than happy to try it out, man. And, you know, I see you guys doing those crazy workouts. It's constantly, it's, you have to stay working out. Like you said, all those good things to be able to, to perform that way, you know, every single day out of the week, day after day after day. So it's the best feeling too, man, because you know, you get a good workout buddy, whatever. And then you go hit the gym after, uh, after working out, you work out your stresses and then you get to a point mentally as well where you have to break through, right? So yeah. you break through that, you feel super accomplished, and then you get back into the office the next day. Okay, I gotta close a deal. Well, it's a lot easier than me having to bench press 250 pounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's what right. I'm saying. So I, I think, you know, you really have to have both of them, man. And I mean, bro, you've been freaking killing it too. So I really think this is part of a movement, man. Like we, we just, we need to keep pushing the forefront of being, you know, a great businessman but also being a great man, right? Yeah. All around, right? In all three of those categories, man. So it's not about, yeah, it's not about becoming a man of success, becoming a man of value. So that's very important, man. Well, Javier. Yeah, Javier, I really enjoyed you today, man. Uh, thank you for the interview. I know you're very busy. You know, again, I'm probably holding you back from your workout, but I really enjoyed this, this interview. Don't worry about it. This is Make, great. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Make sure you guys follow him too on his social media. What's your social media again? Uh, Suarez underscore capital. Underscore capital. There you guys go. Make sure you comment and you share this video to anybody that you think is going to find value in it, guys. As a lot of, if you really pay attention to everything that Javier was saying, has a lot of great key things in there, guys. So don't just skim through the video. Really listen to the video and consume it. Write notes and then apply it, guys. So again, Javi. Thanks, man. It's, you know, definitely a pleasure having you here and, you know, good friend besides you having you here as a, as a guest, good friend of mine, man. So. Love brother. Hey man, look forward to having you here in Tampa real soon, man. We'll go get another yacht and uh, man, just keep running the game up. Thanks man. Let's keep doing it, man. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Yeah, man.